The first part of this problem asks us to find an equation that describes the motion of the spring. So the motion is going to be represented with a position function, specifically y, the y position, as a function of time. And formulas for oscillating motion says that the position is equal to the amplitude of the motion multiplied by the sine of the angular frequency of the motion multiplied by the time. So the amplitude is given to us. The problem just says that the amplitude of the spring is 28 centimeters. So that is our amplitude, but we don't know the angular frequency. But recall that angular frequency is equal to the square root of the spring constant divided by the mass that is attached to the end of the spring. Both of those values are given to us. The spring constant is given as 305 newtons per meter, and the mass is given as 0 0.235 kilograms. If we put this into a calculator, then we find that the angular frequency of the motion is 36.026 radians per second. So now let's put the values into the equation for the motion. So the amplitude is, uh, we're going to write it in meters. So instead of 28 centimeters, we're going to say 0 0.280 meters multiplied by the sine of, and then it's about 36 radians per second. So 36 radians per second multiplied by time. And this is our formula for the y position of the motion. The second part of the problem asks for what times the spring will be the longest and the shortest. That is part B. So remember that the formula for period is that the period of an oscillation, t, is equal to 2 pi divided by the angular frequency. So if we put this into a calculator, if we take 2 pi and then divide it by 36.026 radians per second, we get a period of about 0 0.17441 seconds. So because the motion of the spring is represented by a sine function, think for a second about what that means. In the span of one period for a sine function, we start at 0, the sine function goes up, reaches its maximum, then comes back down, reaches the 0, then comes further down, reaches its minimum, and then comes back up to zero, and that is one period. This is one period. And notice that the maximum height is reached at a quarter of the period, and the minimum is reached at three-fourths of a period. So to represent the max time, it is just going to be one-fourth of the period, and then because the oscillation processes indefinitely, this is going to be added to some integer multiple of the period. Because one period after a fourth of one period, it's going to be at the same position again. So let's take the period that we found earlier, 0 0.17441, and divide by 4. And that gets us about 4.36 times 10 to the power of negative 2 seconds. Then plus n multiplied by the period of 1 point, or 0 0.174 seconds. And this is the case for when n is equal to 0, 1, 2, any positive integer. For t min, the minimum time, that's going to be 3 fourths of the period again, plus any integer multiple of the period. So 3 multiplied by our period divided by 4, that turns out to be 1.31 times 10 to the power of negative 1 seconds, then plus n multiplied by 0 0.174 seconds. And those are our answers for the times where we're at our maximum and the times where we're at the minimum. And that is it for this problem. I hope this video helped you out. 
If you did, please consider subscribing, as that'll help me out in making more videos just like this. That's all for now, and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.